and Tabitha. Luis was a cat about town. Dashing. Charming. Perfectly suave. He lived, unofficially, at the fire station and had, since a daring rescue involving a very small Luis, a very shrill smoke alarm, and a very tall house. His tail still had the scorch marks. Luis liked to go visiting, as society cats do. Sometimes he'd travel in the fire truck. Everywhere he went, Luis was welcomed with open arms and leftovers. One night, after too much catnip and too many sardines, Luis was making his rounds when he took a wrong turn. He climbed a wall and saw Tabitha. Elegant. Silky, perfectly sophisticated. Louis stopped. Tabitha stared. It was love. Love from afar. Love under the spotlight of the moon. Love thwarted by a thick glass door, and by Tabitha's owner. Shoo, she cried, shoo. Luis shooed, but he wasn't done. The next morning, Tabitha stared out at a vast bouquet of sardine tins and twine and feathers. Luis smiled, Tabitha smiled. Tabitha's owner did not smile. Shoo, she cried, shoo. Luis shooed, but he wasn't done. The next day, he brought mice. The day after that, he brought pigeons. And after that, balloons, which is not easy when you're a cat. Each day, Luis and Tabitha stared into each other's eyes until Tabitha's owner chased Luis away. Luis needed advice. He asked his friends over a bowl of cream. You're an outside cat, said Mr. Pickles. And you need to be an inside cat, said Socks. Or at least look like one, said One-Eyed Winky. Luis had an idea. Um. The next day, Luis showed up at Tabitha's door once more. Luis smiled. Tabitha smiled. Tabitha's owner clutched her hands to her heart and opened the door. Luis was inside, where everything was soft and warm and scratchable. And Luis and Tabitha were inseparable. Until the doorbell rang. Is this him? That's him. And Luis and Tabitha were thwarted by the thick glass door once more. Luis had a new home and a new name and a new owner. And all the sardines and cheese he could eat. But all he wanted was Tabitha. And all Tabitha wanted was Luis. It was love, love from afar. Love from far too afar. 
then, the doorbell rang. Is this him? That's him! And that's not him. And Luis was a cat about town once more. Luis needed advice. He asked his friends over a bowl of cream. You're an outside cat, said Mr. Pickles. And she's an inside cat, said Socks. And that's just the way it is, said One-Eyed Winky. So Luis went visiting, as society cats do. He went visiting all across town. Everywhere he went, he was welcomed with open arms and leftovers. And everywhere he went, Tabitha wasn't. Until... One night, Luis was riding in the fire truck when his tail began to tingle. Luis saw Tabitha, elegant, silky, perfectly sophisticated, and in terrible danger. The sirens began to wail. Everyone, outside, cried the firefighters. The crowd was a cloud of arms and shrieks as it gathered on the corner. But there was no Tabitha. And suddenly, there was no Luis. The crowd waited and worried and fretted. Finally, the gray parted and from it emerged Luis and Tabitha, leading Tabitha's owner. The crowd cheered. Tabitha's owner plopped down on the curb and clutched her hands to her heart. She looked at Luis and Tabitha and smiled. The cat show judge placed a blue ribbon on Tabitha and the firefighters placed a gold medal on Luis and declared them both perfectly heroic. Luis was back inside, where everything was soft and warm and scratchable. And Luis and Tabitha were inseparable. in star-dusted art. I love you, said Big Truck, with all of my heart. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Little Truck smiled. Then it sank to a frown. But what about times I might let you down? Like when I spill oil or get grease on the rugs. <gasps> Even then, will you give me your kisses and hugs? <laughs> Darling, said Big Truck, it's not what you think. Love doesn't rise and love doesn't sink. Like stars in the sky, love never gets cold. 
Love never gets tired. It never grows old. But, said Little Truck, there surely must be a time all your heart doesn't apply to me. What if I were a big mixing truck? I might get cemented. I might get all stuck. Big Truck smiled warmly. Yes, problems aren't fun. But I'll solve them with you, each time, one by one. A bulldozer, said Little Truck, that went boom, bang, splat. Could all of your heart love someone like that? Oh. Big Truck laughed gently. We all have bad days. But grumpy or happy, I'll love you always. A backhoe, said Little Truck, might dig a deep hole, and nothing could reach it, no ladder or pole. <laughs> Maybe, said Big Truck, but I'd find a way through. No sadness or darkness could keep me from you. For a moment, they sat, watching stars gleam above. But Big Truck, said Little Truck, there's one thing about love. You love me right now, when I'm little and here. What about when I'm older and no longer near? Big Truck simply smiled. There may come a time when life takes you further than my wheels can climb. But there isn't a distance, no ocean or beach, no jungle or mountain that love cannot reach. All of my heart means that I'll be with you, wherever you go, and whatever you do. Well then, said Little Truck, if all that is true, I love you, my big truck, with all my heart, too. coat, a rainbow mane, and perfect white teeth. Horse, 
does not. Unicorn eats pink cupcakes for every meal. Horse does not. Unicorn makes rainbows. Horse makes something else. Oh. Unicorn dances. Tra la la. Horse sits grumpy. Blah, blah, blah. Unicorn prances. Ha, ha, ha. Horse looks frumpy. Pa, pa, pa. Unicorn makes everything cheery. <laughs> really cheery. Horse does not. Of course, all the animals love unicorn. He has a horn for squirrel to play ring toss. Bird lines her nest with his long, beautiful hair. And everyone loves Yummy. sharing his cupcakes. Won't you join us, horse? Said Unicorn. No, I don't like you, said Horse. But what he meant was, <laughs> I wish I were you. Unfortunately, not everyone who heard about Unicorn was a happy or unhappy animal. A rainbow dancing unicorn who eats cupcakes for breakfast could make someone a lot of money! <laughs> One night, while everyone was asleep, two men crept into Unicorn's paddock. Quietly as they could, they tied a startled unicorn in ropes and loaded him into the back of their truck. Then... They were off! The other animals awoke when they heard the truck. Hurry! They're stealing Unicorn! But uh, I can't run fast enough to catch them, said Squirrel. And I can't fly fast enough, cried Bird. I can't run on the road, said Fox. And... I can't run at all, said Turtle. Only one animal could. Horse thought, and thought, and thought. Then he ran. Great chomps of horse's large teeth. Unicorn was free! Thank you, said Unicorn. You're welcome, said Horse. <laughs> this is Horse. And this is Unicorn. Sometimes, horse eats cupcakes. And sometimes, unicorn eats hay. Sometimes, horse makes rainbows. And sometimes, unicorn does not. Horse likes races. Unicorn likes ring toss. But most of all, they like each other. Horse and Unicorn are friends, and that's better than anything. <laughs> Even pink cupcakes.
balloons and cake. A little Craig book. Yeah! Little Craig loved birthday parties. The balloons, the cake, the games and prizes. But he didn't get invited to many parties. Hmm. Pop, 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 pop. Until one day, he was sitting at his desk when a bright blue invitation popped right in front of him. Little Craig looked up and saw Joey, the new kid in school, holding it out. Craig imagined himself at Joey's party. He'd walk into a sea of blue balloons. Woohoo! He'd eat a big slice of cake. He'd play the games and he'd win a prize. <laughs> Craig looked at Joey and said, I will be there. Joey smiled. <laughs> Mom, Mom. Craig raced home after school that day. I'm going to a party, Mom. <laughs> oh, really? And when is this party? <laughs> he passed her the invitation. Mom went straight to the family calendar on the wall. She wrote Joey's party on the date. The next day, Craig zipped into the kitchen with a bright red envelope. It was from his friend, Dan. Craig couldn't believe this was happening. Two birthday parties. I'm going to two parties, Mom. Hmm, let's put it on the calendar. Did you look at the date, Craig? Mom held out both invitations. They were on the same day at the exact same time. Joey's birthday party, August 23rd, 1 p.m. Cake and ice cream, games and prizes. Dan's birthday, August 23rd, 1 p.m. Skating and pizza. Craig couldn't believe it. He would have to choose. He said, well, all my friends will be at dance. I'll just go to that one. He went to the calendar to cross out Joey's name. Hmm, you told Joey first that you would go to his party. You're only as good as your word, Craig. But it's up to you. You'll know what to do. Hmm. Maybe being invited to two parties wasn't that fun after all. In his room, Craig got out a piece of paper. Dear Joey, I can't go to your birthday party because... It is the same day as dance. He wrote it his best handwriting with his sharpest pencil. Mm-hmm. That should do the trick, Craig thought. <laughs> Mom, can you please mail this to Joey? Mm. Mom read the letter. Mm-mm-mm. Hmm. Imagine you were Joey. What if every kid you invited to your party wrote you a letter like this? Craig imagined a line of kids passing him letters. I won't be there. Sorry, Craig. Neither can I. I'm sorry. It did not feel great. Hmm. 
But it's up to you. You'll know what to do. Craig crumpled up the letter. Back in his room, he held out both invitations. Ah, maybe I could just go to both, he thought. He pulled out his paper and pencil again and made a schedule. 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., Joey's party. 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., Dan's party. Ta-da! Craig proudly showed Mom the plan. Mom, I solved my problem. Oh, Craig. Hmm. Imagine you were Joey and everyone left your party early to go to someone else's. Craig imagined all of his friends leaving before playing any of his party games. It did not feel great. But it's up to you. You'll know what to do. That night, Craig dreamed about Joey, all alone at his birthday party. Everybody left. There was no one to admire his balloons, no one to eat his delicious cake, and no one to play his games to win prizes. The next day at school, Craig told Dan he wouldn't be able to make it to his party. Really? Oh, well, thanks for telling me. He was going to keep his word to Joey. When the party day finally arrived, little Craig walked through a sea of blue balloons and saw Joey's smiling face. Hey, Craig. Hi, Joey. Party's great. He ate a big slice of cake. Mm. Scrumptious. He played all of the party games. Mm. Mm. And he even won a prize. Good job, Craig. You did it. Yay! Craig felt good inside. And it wasn't because he won pin the tail on the donkey. It was because he knew he did the right thing. <laughs> and best of all, he made a new friend along the way. It's so much fun! When Mom picked him up, Craig ran to the car. Mom, I knew just what to do. <laughs> Mom hugged him. And I am so proud of you. <sighs> the end. This is Unicorn, and this is Horse. Unicorn is a unicorn, and Horse is, well, not. Unicorn has a sapphire horn, a silver coat, a rainbow mane, and perfect white teeth. Horse does not. Unicorn eats pink cupcakes for every meal. Horse does not. Unicorn makes rainbows. Horse makes something else. 
Oh. <laughs> Unicorn dances. Tra la la. Horse sits grumpy. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Unicorn prances. Ha, ha, ha. Horse looks frumpy. Pa, pa, pa. Unicorn makes everything cheery. <laughs> really cheery. Horse does not. Of course, all the animals love unicorn. He has a horn for squirrel to play ring toss. Bird lines her nest with his long, beautiful hair. And everyone loves yummy sharing his cupcakes. Won't you join us, horse? said Unicorn. No, I don't like you, said Horse. But what he meant was, <laughs> I wish I were you. Unfortunately, not everyone who heard about Unicorn was a happy or unhappy animal. A rainbow dancing unicorn who eats cupcakes for breakfast could make someone a lot of money! <laughs> One night while everyone was asleep, two men crept into unicorn's paddock. Quietly as they could, they tied a startled unicorn in ropes and loaded him into the back of their truck. Then... They were off! The other animals awoke when they heard the truck. Hurry! They're stealing Unicorn! But uh, I can't run fast enough to catch them, said Squirrel. And I can't fly fast enough, cried Bird. I can't run on the road, said Fox. And... I can't run at all, said Turtle. Only one animal could. Horse thought, and thought, and thought. Then he ran. Great chomps of horses' large teeth. Unicorn was free! Thank you, said Unicorn. You're welcome, said Horse. <laughs> this is Horse. And this is Unicorn. Sometimes, horse eats cupcakes. And sometimes, unicorn eats hay. Sometimes, horse makes rainbows. And sometimes, unicorn does not. Horse likes races. Unicorn likes ring toss. But most of all, they like each other. Horse and Unicorn are friends, and that's better than anything. <laughs> Even pink cupcakes. Plant a Kiss Written by Amy Krauss Rosenthal Illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds
It goes like this. Little Miss. Planted a kiss. Planted a kiss? Planted a kiss. Sunshine. Water. Greet. Repeat. Wait and <sighs> wait. <sighs> Getting late. Doubt. Pout. Sprout. <laughs> Shout! Shout! Gather about. Wow. How? What now? Stare and stare. I'll share, she declared. Don't you dare! It's far too rare. I it'll go bare. She didn't care. From there, everywhere. Fro. Hi. And low. Rain. Or snow. With a bow. Alas, time to go. So she returned. There she learned. From one little kiss. <gasps> Endless bliss. Sometimes after the other socks have gone to sleep, 
He sneaks out of the drawer... Ew. ...and into a hidden tunnel yeah. in the back of the dryer. <laughs> this leads to a place where only socks can go. So many fun things to do. <laughs> there are some things you can do by yourself. Whoa. Whoa. Some things you can't do without a friend. Oh. <laughs> Little Sock wishes he had a friend. Hip, hip, yeah. Are there any friends around? Oh, oh. <gasps> oh look! Hmm? There's another sock who's by herself. Hmm. <laughs> Little Sock wonders... Could she be my friend? Oh, here you go. Hmm. Little Sock starts to worry. How do I make a new friend? Would she be a good friend? Will she want to play with me? Want a friend like me? <gasps> Will she think I'm fun? Huh? Little Sock is nervous, <laughs> but he tries to be brave. <sighs> Little Sock takes a deep breath. Little Sock asks. You be my friend. Hmm. Sure. Hooray! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> 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 Let's go play. In Sock City, there are so many fun things to do. Things you can do by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and other things are just better with a friend. Catch it! It's up! Making new friends is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing with me. See you next time. I love you more than a purple moose. I love you more than a purple moose. I love you more than a spotted goose. I love you more than a bird on my head. I love you more than a marshmallow bed.
I love you more than a cotton candy hat. I love you more than a tap dancing cat. I love you more than camping on the moon. I love you more than a bubblegum balloon. I love you more than a rocket powered scooter. I love you more than a monkey math tutor. Huh, okay. I love you more than rainbow colored rain. I love you more than a flying train. I love you more than the last day of school. I love you more than a bubble filled pool. <laughs> I love you more than jumping to the stars. <laughs> I love you more than ants driving cars. I love you more than pizza and cake. I love you more than a singing snake. than a tiger in a tux. Oh, beautiful! Yes, more! Over here, over here! I love you more than dancing ducks! I love you more than a bug who can juggle! I love you more than a super cozy snuggle. There are lots of things to love. I can think of one or two. But there's one thing I love most, and that single thing is you. Oh. The end.
she shows me new themes every day. It's time to take a rest. For me, by Zach Bush. Illustrations by Gregorio de Lorenis. On the day you were born, I beamed with pride. My eyes filled with tears. I joyfully cried. From the moment I saw you and called out your name, the world as I knew it was never the same. you so gently up close to my chest, nestled so cozy, ah, this day was the best. <laughs> my new role in life had just now begun, your life's greatest treasure, my dear little one. the children that ever could be, you are the one made just for me. Awed and amazed, this was only the start. From your hands to your feet, I loved every part. Your mouth, your ears, and even your nose, your chubby cheeks, and your wiggly toes. I'll never forget your sweet little grin, your soft, tiny hands, your smooth, rounded chin. I cherished each moment you looked in my eyes. I stood by your side through laughter and cries. Of all the children that ever could be, you are the one made just for me. 
You crawled through the house and began to explore. You peeked behind curtains and in every drawer. With amazement and wonder, and never too serious, you'd babble and giggle, always so curious. With comfort, I calmed you and came to your aid, always together, so you weren't afraid. Each morning, I'd wake so excited for you to discover the world and try something new. Of all the children that ever could be, you are the one made just for me. You stood, then fell, but learned how to walk. You said mama and dada and started to talk. You laughed with delight as you slid at the park and clapped the first time you heard a dog bark. You loved to bang pots and put on a show. You, my sweet child, were beginning to grow. I rocked you to sleep in a cradle so tight. I melted when you first kissed me goodnight. Of all the children that ever could be, you are the one made just for me. A trip to the beach set the wheels in motion. You built a sandcastle, took a dip in the ocean. I saved the first curl that was snipped from your head. I watched as you climbed into your new big bed. played in the park, swung a bat, tossed a ball, spent summers poolside, raked leaves in the fall. You rolled in the grass, stared at clouds up above. I watched you being you, and it's you that I love. Of all the children that ever could be, you are the one made just for me. From the day you were born, so cute, so clever, you're one of a kind, and I'll love you forever. It's now time to sleep. Rest your beautiful eyes. Soon, the dark night will turn to blue skies. Tucked in tight, it's my heart where you'll stay. Tomorrow, I'll love you even more than today. Of all the children that ever could be, you are the one made just for me.
Julia wakes up to a beautiful sunrise. She beams. Today is the perfect day to hike up to Pancake Peak. The air is fresh. Julia is prepared. And she is traveling by herself, just the way she likes it. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Julia buzzes through the wildflowers of Muffin Meadow. Click! She spelunks through the darkest depths of Black Coffee Cave. She balances bravely across Bacon Bridge. Julia crests Hash Brown Hill in record time. She has a quick picnic for one. Grumble, grumble, grumble. It's just a little farther until she reaches the turnaround at Pancake Peak. The panorama at Pancake Peak is perfectly peaceful. She has it all to herself just the way she <laughs> A band of bickering creatures disturbs the silence and the view. They notice Julia. We're saved! Cries the tiny pack rat. This nice girl can help us get down! What? Where is a girl? Asks the javelina, squinting and fiddling with his broken glasses. A stranger? Eep! Cries the frightened porcupine. Julia backs away. Oh, I think there's been a misunderstanding. You see, I need to be home in time for dinner, and... My name's Fitz! Interrupts the pack rat. This blind bloke is Lewis, and that lovely bundle of quills is Violet. Stranded, squeaks Violet. Getting to the peak was fine, but when I saw how high we were, I poofed. Which broke my glasses, grumbles Lewis. I can't see a thing. And popped the cargo balloon I was using to lighten my load. Groans fits. Now my pack is too heavy for me to carry. So, what do you say? Can we tag along? Pleads the helpless trio. This is not the way Julia likes it. But once they safely return to the base of Pancake Peak, the relieved tagalongs squeal with glee. Julia, 
They break for a sunny group picnic at Hash Brown Hill. Grumble, grumble, grumble. As Fitz opens his backpack, Julia exclaims, Whoa, a rat's pack is where the snacks are at. After they gobble some of the load, Fitz can carry the pack himself. He shouts, Onward to Bacon Bridge! But Bacon Bridge is broken. We're doomed! Frets Violet. Don't worry, says Fitz. What kind of pack rat would I be without a pack rat? <laughs> you save the, the day, Fitz! Everyone cheers. We should keep moving. Worries, Violet. Black Coffee Cave is getting darker by the minute. Oh no! Julia gasps at the mouth of the cave. I've lost my headlamp. My flashlight is gone too! Fitz cries. Follow me, grumbles Lewis. I can't see, but I have an exquisite nose. Do I smell wildflowers at the other end of this cave? That's Muffin Meadow, exclaims Julia. Come on, everyone. Lewis can get us through this. Shouts. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> Wait, what happened to Muffin Meadow? Whispers Julia. Fits. Nobody's gonna chomp my friends! Violet roars. Righteous defense, Violet. If it hadn't been for you, we'd all be plant food exclaims Julia. Speaking of food, do you smell that? asks Lewis. It smells like spaghetti and pizza, says Violet. And french fries and cherry pie exclaims Fitz. It's dinner at my house, says Julia, and we are right on time.
As the tag-along sit down to dinner, Julia hears a knock at the gate. Knock, knock, knock. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Tonight, Julia is feasting with all her new friends. Just the way she likes it. A botanical pop-up book. Every flower begins as a bud. Their blooms produce seeds which root into sprouts. Spring brings rain and warmer weather, which encourages plants to produce flowers. While all flowers share the same humble beginnings, they come in a stunning range of brilliant hues and exceptional shapes. Annual plants have bright, showy blossoms that last a single season. Perennial plants survive many years and tend to have smaller flowers. Many peony and poppy flowers open in sunlight, closing at night and on cloudy days. Jasmine flowers release their fragrance after the sun sets to attract nighttime pollinators. Some flowers have special colors and scents to attract bees for pollination. Bees turn nectar into honey to feed the colony. Many species of bees are endangered due to climate change, habitat loss, disease, and pesticides. Sweet floral nectar feeds tiny animals and insects. In return, they share their dusty gifts of pollen with other plants. Birds can drink up to two times their body weight in nectar a day. When butterflies land on flowers, pollen is transferred to and from their legs. More than 300 species of fruit depend on bats for pollination. Flowers produce fruits and seeds after pollination. Critters deposit fruit seeds in new areas through their droppings. Some seeds are airy enough to flit in the wind. Others are carefully armored for years. Every fruit starts as a flower, but not every flower produces fruit. While some flowers grow on land, others flourish in water.
Aquatic plants nurture wildlife by filtering water, creating oxygen, and providing shelter. Plants that grow in water often have flexible stems that either float freely or reach into the soil below. Life is enriched by flowers in many ways. With purpose and beauty, they help nature survive and thrive. Love you for always. Do you like letters, little one? And envelopes to read? With notes and stamps from places fun, like cities or the sea. Then look up to the sky, up high, and squint your eyes to see the love note birds are on their way with words to you from me. Their wings are strong, their flight is swift, their plumes a brilliant hue, and nothing stops their airborne gift my loving words to you. You could be in a towering grove and feeling lost and small. But through the trunks, we'll weave and wove to tell you to stand tall. You could be on a ship at sea where waves are fierce and fast. Swifter still my words will be. You're strong and you'll outlast. What about a candy bay where sugar seagulls call? Yes, that's sweet, but I will say you're sweeter than it all. Or if you're on a mountainside and climbing for the top, through every stride. You can, don't ever stop. And what about an inky blue and night comes where you are? Can lovebirds find their way to you? and give a guiding star. Oh, dearest one, it's hard to tell you everything you'll need. Here, at least, you have my love to read and read and read. Where you go, whate'er you do, have peace, be calm, be still. My love will keep surrounding you. It does, it always will.
Let's Be Friends by Marsha Bex and Ali Stahl. Early one morning, just as the sun was starting to rise, Rosie woke up, stretched, and rubbed her eyes. It's a brand new day, she exclaimed. I just know there will be so much to see and do, I can't wait to go out and play. Rosie looked all around for a friend to play with her, but there was no one else there. I guess I'll just have to go play by myself, she sighed. So Rosie started off on her adventure all alone. It wasn't long before she happened upon a strange looking creature. Rosie scurried over to investigate. You don't really look like a fox, said Rosie. Squeak! said the little creature. You don't really smell like a fox, said Rosie. Squeak, said the little creature. And you don't really sound like a fox, said Rosie. Squeak, my name is Colby, and I'm definitely not a fox. I am a mouse. Squeak, will you play with me? Rosie asked him. Of course said Colby. The two new friends took off to go play. Rosie was so excited to have a friend to play with that she started to run faster and faster and faster. Wait for me, shouted Colby from behind. Let's play hide and seek, said Rosie. Great idea, I'll count. Colby covered his eyes. One, two, Rosie and Colby were certainly enjoying their fun day together, but they were running out of things to do. Let's go swimming in the pond, said Colby. Great idea, said Rosie. She took off running towards the pond with Colby hanging on to her tightly. Over by the pond, there was a little gosling named Puddles who was wishing he had some friends to play with too. Stay close to the pond where I can see you play, Mother Goose instructed. Okay, Mama, said Puddles. Puddles looked all around for a friend to play with him, but there was no one else there. I guess I'll just have to go play by myself, he sighed. <sighs> just then, Rosie and Colby arrived at the pond. They were about to jump into the water when they noticed a strange looking creature. The two friends scurried over to investigate. You don't really look like a fox, said Rosie. Or a mouse, said Colby. Honk, said the little creature. <laughs> you don't really smell like a fox, said Rosie. Or a mouse, said Colby. Honk said the little creature. And you don't really sound like a fox, said Rosie. Or a mouse, said Colby. Honk, my name is Puddles, and I'm definitely not a fox or a mouse. I'm a gosling. Honk, will you play with us? Rosie asked him. Of course, said Puddles. Puddles ran up to Mother Goose. Can I go play with my new friends? He asked. As long as you play here in the pond, said Mother Goose. Let's play! The three new friends jumped into the pond. They played and swam and splashed around for hours and hours. After they had finished swimming, Rosie wrapped her new friends in a great big hug. I am so glad I found some friends today. After a long day of playing, just as the sun was starting to set, Rosie and Colby and Puddles yawned very tired yawns and rubbed very tired eyes. Then they all cuddled up next to each other and fell fast asleep, each one dreaming about the adventures they would have together tomorrow. 
you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of storybooks brought to life. My favorite story on books is the unicorn and horse because the horse feels like he's, well, not beautiful, but he actually is. I'm going to explore more on books and you should too. Don't wait around. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.